to the Antioch Medium. My name is Francesca Torres, and we have someone from the dead, a very famous writer, diplomat, educator, civil rights activist, lawyer, and leader of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. I present you with the accomplished James Weldon Johnson. Let every voice and sing till earth and Pleasure, James. That's such a remarkable and accomplished person on my show. It feels great to be alive. So, everyone knows about your accomplishments, but what my viewers really want to know is how you do all of it. Like, how did you get into writing? What was your childhood like? Well, I was born in Jacksonville, Florida in June 17th of 1871. My father was actually never a slave. He was from Virginia, while my mother was from the Bahamas. Her name was Helen Louise Dillette. My mother actually was the reason why I got into the arts. That is amazing that you had so much family support. What did your parents do for a living? My mom was a school teacher. She was actually the first black female teacher at a Florida grammar school. Wow, that is inspiring. I should not forget to give credit to my father, James Johnson. He was a head waiter at the St. James Hotel. His achievement had inspired me to pursue a professional career. Do you have any siblings? Yes, my brother was John Rosamond. He became a composer. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. What should go next, John? Ring with harmonies of liberty? Almost done with our 200th song for Broadway. Do you remember when we wrote Under the Bamboo Tree? Oh my god, that was one of my favorite ones. And it was a really long time ago. Before we dive into the rest of your professional life, I would like to learn more about your education. When did you go to school? My mother first educated John and me at home, and then we attended Edwin M. Stanton School. Afterwards, I enrolled in Historically Black College at Atlanta University to see if the education I received there would be of assistance toward my civil rights activism. In addition, I was a member of Phi Beta Sigma, and our purpose was to give back to the community. Very interesting. Your fraternity is very different from the ones in existence today. Would you like to add anything in regards to your education? Yes, but I was no longer the student. After graduating, I got a job at Stanton School and became a teacher. Unfortunately, because of the color of my skin, I wasn't paid as much as the other teachers. But that did not hold me back. I became the principal at age 35. And my goal was to improve black education, so I added the 9th and the 10th grade. During my time as a principal, I also founded the Daily American Newspaper, which reported on African American issues, but it failed due to financial difficulties. Then I had help from a white lawyer named Thomas A. Ledwith, who I had met at university, and he helped me read law. His efforts helped me become the first black lawyer accepted to the Florida Bar in 1898 since the end of Reconstruction. This is mind-blowing. By the age of 27, you already have been a lawyer and a teacher. Most 27-year-olds at that age don't even know where they are going in life. Shortly after this time, correct me if I am wrong, but you got overwhelmed with being a lawyer. So you, after your brother finished school, you two took Broadway by storm. That's correct. Before we continue on, we'll be summoning another person from the dead right after this break. Renaissance was all about alt, literature, music, and learning influences for black culture from the 1920s to the mid-1930s. It developed through racial pride and a push for more rights as everyone was drawn to Harlem. One of the most happening spots for everyone to hang out at was the Savory Ballroom. Being a big dancing area, this was home to the Lindy Hop and a variety of theme nights. The Savory Ballroom, the place to be on any night. 
Welcome back to the Antioch Medium. This late president is known for his love of nature, his stance on foreign policy, and inspiring the creation of the teddy bear. Give it up for President Theodore Roosevelt! How are you doing, President Roosevelt? Great. Who knew you could become so claustrophobic in a coffin? Game. We're going to play true or false regarding James's amazing life. James will be reading the questions while me and Theodore will be saying the answer. Let's get started. Is it true that I went to Harvard University? That is false. You went to Columbia University. That is correct. Is it true that I was active in the Republican Party and then went to Venezuela when Teddy um, appointed me as U.S. Consul? Yes, that is true. Is it true that I then served in Nicaragua, where I helped the Marines defeat the rebels? True. Is it true that during this time I wrote several poems, married my beautiful wife, Grace Nail, and wrote the autobiography of an ex-colored man? True. And with that, let's say goodbye to Theodore Roosevelt. Give him a hand. Yeah. On a more serious note, I heard that your wife is no longer with you. If she were here today, what poem would you read her? Beauty that is never old. Can you read it for us now? Sure. Okay. When buffeted and beaten by life's storms, when by the bitter cares of life oppressed, I want no sure haven than your arms. I want no sweeter heaven than your breast. When over my life's way there falls a blight of sunless days and nights of starless skies, enough for me the calm and steadfast light that softly shines within your loving eyes. The world for me, and all the world can hold, is circled by your arms. For me there lies, within the lights and shadows of your eyes, the only beauty that is never old. Good. We'll be right back after the break. One of the hottest new stores of the Holden Renaissance, Macy's, has just opened up in town. We have the hottest music, best clothes, and most wanted accessories. Open daily from 8 to 7. Come visit us on the corner of 5th and Broadway. Macy's, the best store in town. And welcome back to the Antioch Media. James, before you leave, can you, read, can you give us three fun facts about yourself that we have yet not uncovered? One, I was secretary at the NAACP due to my connections with Booker T. Washington, where I dabbled a little bit in the Progressive Party. Two, I taught at Fisk University. And the third one is that I was the first African-American professor at NYU. Thank you. To conclude this show, James will be reading his poem, The Suicide. For 50 years, cruel, insatiable, old world, you have punched me over the heart till you made me cough blood the few paltry things I gathered. You snatched out of my hands. You have knocked the cup from my thirsty lips. You have laughed at my hunger of body and soul. You look at me now and think, he is still strong. There ought to be 20 more years of good punching there. At the end of that time, he will be old and broken, not able to strike back, but cringing and crying for leave to live a little longer. Those 20 pitiful extra years would please you more than the 50 past. Would they not, old world? Well, I hold them up before your greedy eyes and snatch them away as I laugh in your face. Ha ha! Bang! While vacationing in Wiscasset, Maine, his wife was driving the car when a train hit them. Tragically, James Weldon Johnson died on June 26, 1938, at age 67. More than 2,000 people attended his funeral. James Weldon Johnson was a key figure in the Harlem Renaissance due to his progressive leadership and extraordinary poetry. He was a great role model to other African Americans and all the great that one can achieve in life. He had great political influence, famous novels, and worked to gain more black rights. James Weldon Johnson's legacy will live on.